David Tiley here from Exothermic Robotics. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a drivetrain. The drivetrain that we're building today is very fast, light, and easy to maintain and change as needed. Let's get to work. So what we're doing here is we're just coming in with this axle from the outside rail, and then we're just putting enough space on it so that the wheel will just barely not rub against the chassis rail. You don't want to put too much space, otherwise you run out of space to put this next sprocket on. This sprocket is a six-tooth sprocket. We're going to put a 12-tooth sprocket on the motor. And that's a two to one gear ratio. Um, whenever you have a two to one gear ratio, that's going to be a very fast gearing. Uh, with the small wheels especially, you'll have a lot of acceleration. Not necessarily a high top speed, but what you really want to do is be able to maneuver well. So you get that in there, just tighten up that lock collar, and then we're ready to move on. With this motor, we just want to, with this motor one, we just want to put on enough space to get past the wheel. And then we, when we put on the sprocket, we want to make sure that it's lined up with the other sprocket, and really this is just trial and error. I happen to know what the spacing is just because we do this build a lot, and that'll accompany in the documentation. And then you just want to put an, another lock collar on, and this part is really similar to the rear wheel that we just did. And then you want to put another washer and lock collar on on the other side to make sure it doesn't pull out of the motor. Tighten both of those up, and you're done with one side of a gear train. And then you want to put some Omnis on the front. We used a two to one gearing here today, but gearing really depends on whether or not you want to be able to push or go quick. Two to one is a very fast gearing, but a one to one or even something as high as a one to two could be useful for pushing. This video assumes that the robot won't have to drive over rough terrain or go up or down ramps. Obviously, if that were the case, larger wheels might be a better choice. As far as spacing goes, you want to make sure that there's enough play in the mechanism so that the mechanism doesn't bind, but at the same time, you don't want your wheels falling off. Aside from that, make sure to check the PDF document that accompanies this video for in more information about drivetrains. Have fun building. Bex is awesome!